Mathematica's sophisticated graphics capabilities make it easy for you to create, combine, customize, and annotate 2D and 3D graphics, even if you don't have any prior experience with Mathematica. So to begin, let's make a new section cell and call this one Basic Graphics so that we have some area reserved to work with graphics. We'll create our first graphic in this section by using freeform input. So that way, if you don't remember the specific commands we've used thus far, it's no problem because we can just have freeform input take care of that for us. So now that we've started a new uh, freeform input cell, let's type graph of sine of x over x, and then press shift enter. As before, we get back the Wolfram language command that we would invoke directly, along with the result. Now let's do another one, and this time let's create something in 3D. We create another freeform input cell, and this time let's try asking it to visualize sine of x times y. With hitting shift enter, we get the evaluation and we see the Wolfram language code, again, along with that result. Now any 3D graphic in Mathematica can be rotated by clicking and dragging. You'll get an indication of when you can do this because the cursor will turn into a set of twisty arrows, which is your signal that clicking and dragging will rotate that object. You can also zoom in and out by holding down the Alt key or Command key on Mac. Um, when you do this, the cursor turns into a zoom icon. And if you click and drag while holding down Alt, you will zoom in and out of that plot. You can also hold down the shift key and then click and drag, which will pan the image around itself. <clears throat> now as before, I can click the expand icon in the uh, right hand corner of the freeform input box to see more results in case there were other things I might be interested in checking out. Now in this case, one of the alternate results is a contour plot of the option, which is pretty neat. And maybe that's something I was looking for instead. I can click the input for that particular result, which will paste in an orange arrow to show me, show me what I've selected. And now if I press shift and enter to evaluate, the previous output is replaced with the output for that contour plot. Now let's click uh, the collapse icon to hide the extra freeform input results uh, now. And then now let's see what happens as I mouse over the contours of the contour plot. You'll see that little um, tool tips pop up to show me the values of the contours. There are lots of little things like that built in uh, to Mathematica that will give you some additional information or help you explore your results in more detail, which is a really nice feature uh, of the system. And of course, like we've seen previously, we can click on the Wolfram language command in the bottom half of the freeform input box to remove the freeform input command entirely and now we can edit the command directly. So let's change the expression so that we have a contour plot of sine of two times x times y, and it's as simple as adding in the two and then reevaluating to see the result. I hope you're starting to see how nice it is to start with freeform input and then migrate to using the Wolfram language command directly to get exactly the result you are looking for. Now you can graph multiple functions on the same set of axes, so let's take a look at how we do that uh, next. First, we'll create a new subsection and call it Creating Multiple Graphics. And then arrow down to start a new input cell, and we'll use freeform input to ask for plot sine of x and sine of x over x to see what that looks like. So looking at the Wolfram language code uh, that was returned by the parser, we can see that instead of giving the plot command a single expression to graph, we can give it a list of expressions by putting them inside curly braces. Remember, curly braces denote lists and ranges, and that was one of the cardinal rules of the Wolfram language we discussed uh, a few videos ago. We can see that by default, Mathematica colors the plots differently so that we can tell them apart but we can go even further by using an option to tell Mathematica to make a legend for us. So let's start by clicking on the Wolfram language command to get rid of the freeform input. Once we do that, let's put the cursor between the right curly brace and the right square bracket. We do that uh, because the cursor is now at the very end of the re required syntax for the plot command, and we can now start adding in options, which is one way you can customize a result in Mathematica. 
I happen to know the name of the one option is Plot Legends. So let's put a comma in and start typing in uh, Plot Legends. As we do that, Mathematica's auto-completion shows us that indeed Plot Legends is an available option and we can even select one of the suggested settings. In this case, let's choose Expressions. Now when we pick uh, this and evaluate, we'll see that our plot uh, has a nice legend and it automatically labels the legend using the expressions that we are plotting. It's pretty slick and it's very easy to do. Now let's look at another way of adding options, which is by using the suggestions bar, which I've had uh, turned off for this video so far. We'll start by creating a brand new plot, and since we've gotten used to uh, the syntax for the plot command, let's type that in directly using the Wolfram language. So we type plot, open square bracket, sign, open square bracket of x, close square bracket where x goes from uh, 0 to 10. Now let's show the suggestions bar by clicking the arrow icon and we can see some different choices we have available. Let's click on more to see even more options and let's choose add fill to see what that does. We can see that Mathematica adds filling and does so by adding in an option that looks like filling uh, arrow automatic. You might be wondering how to make that right arrow so let's delete automatic and that right arrow and then just type a hyphen followed by a greater than symbol and then type the word uh, automatic. You'll notice that as we do this Mathematica formats the hyphen and greater than symbol uh, into that nice arrow. <coughs> now let's add a plot, uh, sorry, let's add a label uh, to our plot. One of the choices on the suggestions bar is labels and clicking that opens an interactive menu in which we can give a general label for the plot as well as labeling the X and Y axes. And we have control over things like the uh, typeface and font size when doing this. Now I'm going to type in uh, my plot for the general label and you can see a preview of what that will look like when the option is applied. Let's also put in a label of uh, sign of X for the Y axis and click done. And as before we see the appropriate options and option values pasted in. You may notice that in my case, Mathematica is using the percent sign shorthand to represent a previous output. The number to the right of the percent sign refers to a specific output. If I'm worried that I may not evaluate my notebook in exactly the same order in the future, however, I can click the Roll Up Inputs button on the suggestions bar. And then Mathematica will take my previous sequence of results, which I've built up by using suggestions and combine them into a single input. The benefit of this is that I can open up my notebook later on and evaluate the single cell to generate the graphic that I originally created incrementally by using those suggestions. Now there are many, many different options available for Mathematica commands, including lots of options for customizing the results you get when creating graphics. So a good way to see what is available and how to apply those options is to go straight to the documentation, do a search, and then look at the options section. Now besides customizing graphics by applying options, you can also set, uh, use a set of drawing tools that are available in Mathematica to annotate 2D graphics. So let's create a new subsection called Annotating Graphics, and we'll try this out. I'm going to copy and paste my previous result of the sine curve with filling, and now I'm going to choose Graphics and Drawing Tools. Mathematica opens up a palette with different sections for adding objects to my graphic, like points, lines, arrows, polygons, and text. Rearranging those objects, changing the fill and stroke for those objects, modifying arrowheads, adding text, and, and a whole lot more. So down at the bottom, in the settings section, is two important buttons. The first one on the left toggles alignment guides on and off. Alignment guides help you line up the various components in an annotated graphic, so they can be very useful in making sure you have everything just so. The second button resets the selected component to its default appearance, which is useful in case you want to go back to basics. So let's add an arrow to our plot uh, to point to the origin. We choose the arrow tool in the tools section, and we click and drag to place that arrow. Once we are finished, we can click the arrow to highlight it, and an orange bounding box will be drawn around it to let us know that is what is selected. We can resize it, 
delete it, move it, or use other controls in the drawing tools uh, palette to change its, its uh, appearance. Let's add some text. We do this by selecting the text tool and then typing. So let's write, what is this point called? Now, your text may be too small like mine is, uh, so I'm going to click to highlight it and then go to the text section in the palette and use the slider bar to adjust the size to something more readable. Of course, you can customize the text even further by adjusting the other available options if you like. Now that we have some experience with creating and customizing graphics by using options, the suggestions bar, and drawing tools, let's go one step further by learning how to make our graphics interactive. In the next video, we'll learn how to take anything, a calculation, a graphic, uh, a piece of text, and turn it into an interactive model that you can then use to explore and explain all kinds of concepts.